Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, located in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, August 31st, end of the summer, heading into Labor Day. And as always, we'll take a look back at last week's eBay auction results, see how things did. There were some good prices uh, on things that went through, and as well on Catawiki. Catawiki, they had some good objects as well. And uh, they seem to be building up over there more and more items every week, so keep an eye on it. And the prices seem to be doing pretty well. All right, one of the things I wanted to mention was that, as, as many of you know, there's a sale, series of sales coming up in New York uh, early this month in September um, uh, during Asia Week, and we finished uploading the rest of the catalogs that seemed to be uh, right for us, and uh, you might want to go over and take a look. Um, one of them that we added this week was the Bonhams catalog. It's an interesting auction. They've got some nice things, a lot of cloisonne, some good scholars objects, lots of snuff bottles. If you're a snuff bottle fan, check it out. And there's some very good small white mutton fat jades, and it goes on and on. Uh, typical bottom sale. They always do a good job. They get nice things. And uh, often in price ranges that uh, you know regular collectors can afford, as well as some obviously some very high-end things. All right, and then moving over here, there's uh, chi uh, fine classical Chinese paintings and calligraphy at Sotheby's. We've added that. Uh, there are this is this catalog is really interesting. It has multiple collections, including some people pieces from the Jungkook collection. As you know, there's a, a series of sculptures from the Jungkook collection being sold at Christie's. Well, it appears that Sotheby's got some stuff as well. I guess the the uh, the, the heirs are distributing things between the two auction houses, um, uh, which isn't a bad idea. So uh, I hope they they do well. But there's some great paintings in this uh, in this catalog uh, from every period, from um, you know from the from the from the twelfth century right through modern. Some very good pieces. So you want to check that out too. We'll we're going to be doing videos on some of these in the next week. <clears throat> One of the things I wanted to mention was um, was this catalog at Bonhams as well, Ancient Skills, New Worlds. And this is a really interesting small catalog. There's only 20 or 30 lots in it, but it's uh, comprised only of Meiji period, uh, some of the finest metalwork, mixed metalwork you're going to see uh, uh, anytime soon, I can tell you. Uh, this, and, and they put some pretty good estimates on things. I think they're, they're fairly hopeful. But uh, there's uh, this. This is just quite fantastic. This thing here. This is um, uh, a sculpture by uh, to Tomo Nubu, um, Meiji period sculpture, a uh, model of a hawk. Okay, and sweet with a stand. Just unbelievably great quality. Estimated at 100 to 125 thousand. Um, there's also a pair of jars, footed jars in here that are quite extraordinary. I think they're estimated at about double this. So you want to check it out. If you're a Japanese collector or you're interested in learning more about it, uh, this catalog will show you the very best of uh, Japanese metalwork from the, from the Meiji period, okay? And then on to this. This is uh, the fine Chinese uh, ceramics and works of art uh, at Christie's. Uh, on the cover, there, there's a, they have a pair of these big tongue figures. They're quite exceptional. And uh, there is also uh, this. This is my favorite thing in the catalog. I'll, I'm going to talk about it when we do the video. But this is a very large graystone standing figure of uh, Josira. And it's a Lao to Song Dynasty piece. It is 68 inches tall. And um, I, you come over and take a look at this thing. It is quite extraordinary. The facial expression of the figure, the carving is out of this world. And uh, the estimate on it seems, I think it seems reasonable. Uh, based on what some great sculptures are bringing lately. This one has an extensive uh, 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 owner, history of ownership. It was brought over by originally by C.T. Liu and Frank Cairo and uh, had uh, been through the, J, the Thai, Thai and Company and then on to Arthur Sackler. And then for the last few years, it's been in the Sackler Foundation collection and has been on loan to um, the St. Bonaventure University up until about uh, two or three years ago. But it's qu quite a piece of work, really something. So check them out. We'll do the video on them on these next week. We're going to start turning them out uh, to get people sort of up to speed on what's happening down there. It's an interesting, interesting bunch of auctions and some fabulous stuff in it. All right, so check it out. All right, and now on to uh, what happened on eBay last week. Uh, we had this, this very nice, this is a really elegantly done rank badge uh, with an ascending hair, white heron on it. Uh, beautiful quality uh, stitching on it. A mix, nice mixture of metallic threads. Uh, they included a good shot of the back of it. And it appeared to be in very good condition overall. And condition on silks is pretty crucial. Um, and this, this particular one brought $1,067, okay? 
nice design and in beautiful shape. And then there was this jar. This is a nice big transitional period jar with mask loop handles on it. And I wondered how this would do because it had a hairline, a very obvious hairline, right here off the top. It looked to be running maybe six or seven, six inches down the body. And uh, apparently the hairline didn't bother people too much. It brought $2,605. Now, it was well done. It was a beautifully done piece. It came out of a, a, a seller uh, that we haven't seen before uh, often. He's on a car occasionally from Ohio. But uh, 2605 bucks. Uh, that's a good price for that. All right. And this was something we put up. We don't do a lot. We're starting to do more with buy it now is because we're realizing that people are buying from uh, the fixed price items. I know everybody likes the excitement of an auction. You hope you're going to get a bargain. But sometimes the buy it nows are bargains. OK, um, this was a, a pair of Chinese uh, pricket sticks, bronze, uh, late Ming, early Qing dynasty pricket sticks. These are rare. OK, these are quite rare. And um, they had a very modest buy it now price of about 775 bucks for the pair. They were a foot tall. And uh, so I think somebody that gets the newsletter bought it because w within an hour or two of the newsletter going out, somebody had bought it, um, I, as I recall. I checked it the next morning to see if anybody had, and sure enough, they were gone. All right, these were great. I think if the guy had auctioned them, he probably would have gotten triple that price. All right, a pair of these are very rare. They also did them in Japan, but this particular pair happened to be um, Chinese. And uh, seven hundred and eighty-five dollars, which is which I think was a bargain, and it was also make an offer. So I, I, I have a feeling maybe the guy didn't even make an offer, because usually if somebody says make an offer, they'll take ten percent below the asking price. All right, but those were wonderful, and they came out of a, a, a that seller that we just mentioned before that had the transitional jar. All right, so we'll be watching him, and then on to this. This was a very nice, uh, fairly large, um, uh, uh, Guangxu marked uh, bowl. Uh, it appears to be period with these uh, nice soft enamels uh, running uh, ribbons running through the uh, Buddha symbol swastika symbols it had a green interior and uh, I think it had a faint hairline yeah right here it had a little bit of a faint hairline but a very nicely done bowl and it looked to be authentic and it went for nine hundred and nine dollars also it had a nice shape to it look at check out the shape on this all right it was a beautifully potted piece of porcelain and then on to this was the uh, chin lung uh, export plate. This was a good one. The pattern is a fairly stock one. You see this pattern fairly often with the three sprays of flowers with these open spaces uh, around the outer rim. And then the central field is often done like this with a foreground landscape scene with rocks and so forth. <clears throat> and they'll vary from having animals on them. Just this week somebody sent me pictures of a pair of plates they bought at, a, at an auction here in the in the northeast, actually not far from here, and they had a pairs of rams uh, in the foreground here on a nearly identical scene, and then in the background, of course, the uh, enameled uh, 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 you know uh, shoreline uh, behind it. And uh, this one did pretty well. It brought three hundred and five dollars. All right, but it's a nice desirable pattern, though it was a, a fairly well known one with variations. And then on to this. This was that uh, 18th century uh, the bell form cup. Beautifully done, brown, uh, brown dressing on the rim. And I like the fact that the, the decoration on it was sparse. Lots of negative space in it so that your eye draws to the artwork and, and uh, how carefully it was done. Here you have these double gourd devices with butterflies and so forth. And uh, this cup did pretty well. It brought $293. But I don't think it was a, uh, a bad uh, buy at all. The seller had it up as soft paste, so maybe it was. But uh, um, soft paste is just a, it's a, different, it's a little different than porcelain, let's put it that way. It's not fired at quite the same temperature. All right, and then on to this. This was that uh, pair of uh, uh, oil lamps, pair of, uh, oil, oil lamps with the figures of the boys. Normally you see these in Famille Rose, and to see them in, in sort of Blanc de Chine is, is sort of unusual. And I thought these were quite nice and quite, quite fairly rare. And uh, they did okay, but I think they were sort of a steal, $265 for the pair. These are 18th century figures. Uh, and uh, I think that was a, a pretty good buy if you're a collector of figural porcelains. It was a great buy, you know, $130 a piece. You can't go wrong. All right, and then on to this. This was that very pretty and very unusual Chinese export 18th century platter, you know, puce decoration with a gold uh, dog running dog tooth uh, inner border. And then I love the way they circled the ship with a serpent running around it and you see his face up here and then it was inscribed with the ship in the centered beautifully in the plate running with the wind 
and uh, uh, this this did quite well. It brought two thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollars, but it was a very very pretty plate and very unusual. Obviously, it was made for somebody specifically. Uh, that and that that also, of course, drives the price. Okay. And then into this, the, the uh, arrow vase. This was a, a uh, the seller put it up. He's a pretty good seller. He knows what he's talking about. He, he said it was either Song or early Ming uh, arrow vase in bronze, uh, nicely done with archaistic uh, uh, elements all over it. Uh, good deep color, nice nice finish on it. Uh, here's the underside of it. It looks like maybe the base had been worked on at some point, uh, maybe a old repair or something. But a good early bronze, and it was a nice size too. How big was this? I remember. I just remember this was fairly good size, uh, 25 centimeters, so about eight or nine inches tall. A pretty good, good table size, and uh, it brought 800, 800. Oh, it didn't sell. It got up to 872, and it didn't sell. Well, there we go. Maybe he'll put it up again. That's Hans over in, in the Netherlands. He, he might have had a reserve on it of a thousand bucks. All right, but uh, that's a, that's a nice bronze. So keep your eye out for that. If it comes back, buy it. I think that, I think 872 is pretty reasonable. All right, and uh, and then on to this, the uh, Chinese uh, export uh, gilt uh, tea caddy. These seem to be getting uh, more and more interest lately. Um, uh, they've been turning up, and the prices on them uh, seem to be sort of rebounding. Um, and this was this was a pretty good example of it. It went for uh, thirteen hundred and ninety-seven dollars. It was fairly complete, though. Uh, it was a nice example, and it still had its original wooden feet. Uh, a lot of the times, the feet have been knocked off and replaced on these. This had the original feet, and there are the fittings inside, all the ivory fittings. Hope they don't get in trouble shipping that. <laughs> and uh, onto this, this very nice small uh, 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 nephrite. Uh, jade uh, vase. This is one of those miniature uh, vases, only a couple of few inches tall, and uh, it went for a good price. It brought $910, but I think it was, it was a nice old looking jade, probably 19th century, judging by the shape and color. All right, and then on to the silver bowls, these reticulated silver bowls that have the monogram plaques on them that were never used for some reason. It's funny, they turn up once in a while and people buy them and they don't bother putting their monograms on them. Here it is. There's the hallmark of the maker on the bottom. Nice Chinese bowls. And they went for $810, um, which I think is pretty reasonable, okay? Pretty reasonable for those. That's good work, all right? Most likely uh, made in Hong Kong. And then on to, uh, hold on, here. This uh, Chinese export uh, gilt-handled uh, uh, teapot. This was a very pretty one. Had a bit of wear on it, but nicely done. Nice early one. And... Um, it went for uh, $1,388. I talked about this one last week because I liked it because of the, the, the legitimate wear on it. And it was a nice, a nice looking pot and, and the uh, green uh, enamel decoration framing the uh, landscape scene with the figures. I thought that was pretty nice. And now on to this. This was a little bargain. This was an early 18th century melon formed uh, teapot. Uh, well done with just a couple of colors, red and gold and uh, under, under glazed blue, and uh, went for a, a very reasonable price, $212. <clears throat> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good buy for that. I, I think that was quite a nice thing, all right? And then on to this. This was that big uh, lighthouse form uh, coffee pot. And uh, we I talked about it a little bit last week because this, the central scene of the, of the woman with the, with the, uh, with the older man uh, it looks almost like he was a Mongolian. Uh, we saw this same pattern on a plate, uh, some of you may recall, around a year ago. All right, it was very, it filled the whole plate. It was very unusual. And now here's a lighthouse teapot in this pattern. Very unusual. A lot of gilding on this originally. That whole handle was all gilt. It's worn down a bit from use and same, the same over here. And uh, somebody may have cleaned it at one point or another with ammonia, which will strip off uh, gilding very quickly because it's fired on at a very low temperature. But at uh, any rate, it went for $763, which was, I think, a perfectly reasonable buy because uh, that's, a, that's a quite a rare pattern, all right? And then on to uh, some things over at Catawiki that went through this week. And this was a, this was a, a nice group of four uh, Wan Lee period plates, all in different patterns. Um, two of them were quite similar, but they were all a little bit different. And four of them for $277, all right? That's not a bad buy. Here they are, okay? These two are somewhat similar, but they were filled with different uh, elements, and the others are different. 
completely different. And uh, for four of them, that's you know that works out to about 70, 80 bucks a uh, seventy dollars a plate, eighty bucks a plate. Can't beat it. All right. And uh, on to uh, this. This was that uh, nice looking, probably Kung Shi period ball shaped uh, with a, with a slightly shaped rim. Nice, nicely rounded sides, and it wasn't tip-top quality kung shi, but a perfectly good piece, and uh, it went for just $196. Not bad, okay? If you like kung shi and you can't afford the $1,800 bowl, this was a very respectable bowl to buy at that price. And then onto this, the bronze. This was a good uh, double, double, uh, a double dragon head loop-handled bronze with a pear-shaped body, and uh, it was a very good piece. I, I, it had a tiny, tiny, tiny chip out of the bronze on the, uh, on, around the foot rim on the inside, as I recall, but nothing distracting at all, okay? And um, it's, this, one, oh, this one still has, still has a couple days to go. It's, got, uh, it's up to $144, and uh, we'll see how that does, okay? There's, this, there's several uh, pieces we're gonna take a look at that are coming up on uh, Katawiki. That was one of them, okay? And also closing uh, in a couple of days is uh, this, this very nice cockerel form uh, uh, teapot. Nice chin lung teapot. It's up to $463. I think it's got a little ways to go yet. Very unusual, all right? And uh, on to uh, this. There's a nice looking Chan uh, uh, early 17th century or so plate. It's up to $1,000, but this is a pretty rare example. And uh, beautifully, beautifully decorated. I like the figure scene with the mountains in the background. Nice color and appears to be in very good condition. So we'll see how that does. All right, and then this little bronze of uh, Lu Hai, there he is. And we've seen these bronzes before, and often, um, uh, the, the, most of the time, the, 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 the turtle is gone. These figures were often depicted with the ribbons of cash and then standing on, on a turtle. And most of the time, when you see him in collections, you have the figure without the turtle, and he's been remounted on a stand, okay, some sort of a stand. Here he is with his turtle, all right? And uh, it's up to $752, and again, has a couple days to go, all right? And there's this very nice Femi Ver plate, 18th century. That's only up to $69. See how that does? And this is also a very, very pretty uh, uh, Chan Chi uh, or Wan Li bowl, a uh, small sort of a shallow bowl with this pine trees, these stylized pine trees coming out from both sides with a heron on the ground and one ascending from above. Nice looking piece. It's up to $289. We'll see how that does. And uh, again, there's another uh, 18th century, probably Kung Shi plate. that's only up to $4, but it's got five days to go. So that'll be in the newsletter this week. And this uh, very nice pair, these just went up the other day, really nice pair of export gravy boats done in, 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 in Western and European, probably English silver forms, these helmet-shaped uh, creamers or, or gravy boats. All right, and uh, these are very nice. They're up to $3. I suspect they'll do considerably better than that. But if you collect export, they're worth taking a good look at, okay? And uh, that's about it, okay? Uh, I hope everybody has a, has a great weekend coming up. And uh, check out the uh, auction catalogs with Sotheby's and uh, Christie's and Bonham's. They've all, as always, have done a good job presenting. Uh, they have some nice, uh, nice items coming up, some very good statues this year. Statues seems to be bronzes and statues at the, uh, at the upcoming sales are, are going to be the, 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 the main items of interest. There's some good porcelain as well, of course, but, but the, the bigger pieces, the, uh, the, sculpture, the sculptures and bronzes seem to be leading the way. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see how they do. All right. Have a fabulous weekend, and I'll see you all next week. And uh, we'll try to get those extra, those other videos out. Uh, we just have to find the time to do them. And uh, we got a holiday Monday here, Labor Day weekend. So, but we'll get it done. We'll get it done. We'll get it done. We'll figure it out. All right. So uh, have a great weekend, and see you all next time. Thanks for visiting. And uh, subscribe if you haven't so far, and come over to bitamount.com and uh, put something on the form or, or sign up for the newsletter. Uh, and uh, we'll be back uh, next week. All right. Thank you all. Bye-bye.